Hopefully been enjoying our conversations with John Wayner of the Pirates this week. And uh, we get to talk with him again today about, well, a lot of things going on in spring training. But, man, John, was that not fun yesterday watching those Pirates young prospect pitchers in, in the breakout game? I think it's great. I think what MLB has done uh, with this is uh, pretty cool because unlike in the other pro sports, you don't normally – you hear about these prospects, you don't get to see them for a while. You know, typically it's going to take two or three years for a college player, at least high school player longer than that. And, um, you know, you hear all the names, but you want to see them. That's one of my favorite things in spring training is, is seeing the young players and to be able to put them on national TV. And, you know, you have two of the top organizations in terms of prospects going at it with the Orioles and the Pirates and, you know, Jackson Holiday, the number one overall prospect and Paul Skeens, who's like, I think number three, Orioles have the best prospects in all of baseball and then the Pirates maybe have the best uh, pitching prospects. So to see them go head to head and get a glimpse into your team's future is is a pretty cool and, and, and it didn't disappoint as far as you see in the town, especially the Pirates young pitchers and, and you know, they, they pretty much dominated <laughs> that game and, you know, only gave up the one hit and um, you know, to see Skeens throw hundred and two and then he and he throws a two oh change up to holiday, which to me is is just something you don't see very often when a guy throws that hard and Bubba Chandler come in late and Hey, get a save and <laughs> throwing you know, fastballs by guys. It's I, I think it's uh, a, a very neat uh, exhibition, I guess, for for the fans and and even for the players. You know, the players, you know, they they want to they want to face the best and do it on a national stage. So I thought it was very well done. Uh, it really was. You think Skeens was a little bit excited last night? <laughs> yeah, I think most of the guys were. Yeah, I think they were all pretty excited to go and you know, go up against the best and, and to see what they can do. And especially for a guy like Skeens, and there's so much talked about with him, obviously being a number one overall pick and, and, you know, he's, he's closer than all of them, I think, to get to the big league level. And, you know, uh, uh, just a little tiny glimpse of a, a very bright future and a guy that uh, I think we'll see before the all-star break. Yeah. You talk about young pitchers uh, and, and the pirates threw out some that maybe were unexpected in that game that, uh, uh, Pokes might not have thought, okay, well, we've been hearing about Solomito, and he didn't play. And Jared Jones, of course, he's still with the big team. Uh, but we got to see Bubba Chandler for an inning. Uh, but then you you get out a guy uh, that, uh, you know, um, who were some of the guys? Hunter Barco, uh, who was a revelation. That guy, he was drafted after having had Tommy John surgery. How about the Pirate Scouts that picked that guy out of the, out of the pile? Patrick Riley. These guys are... Uh, they've just got so many great arms in that system. They really do. And to win at the big league level, especially to get to the postseason and win in the postseason, you got to have good pitching. And, and certainly we got a glimpse of that last night. And, you know, uh, for a guy like Marco, as you mentioned, who's been injured. But um, I've always said this. This is kind of going off on a tangent a little bit. But um, as much as you don't like to see injury, um, you know, it, it's not a bad thing, I guess, that, that that these guys have it in the minor leagues. So you don't see them have it and miss a year and a half at the major league level. You know, yeah. it might take them a little longer, but um, at least you get it out of the way, and and hopefully that's the end of your arm problems. And you know, then you're going to have a you know a, a great career, and you don't miss any big league time. And so. Um, yeah, it, it, it uh, there are a ton of arms, um, and uh, Solomito, I, I think he was supposed to pitch, but he was a little under the weather, so he got a little behind in his throwing program, so they didn't have him out there. I got to see him earlier this spring, and, you know, kind of a funky lefty from Pennsylvania, and, um, you know, he he looks like he, he, he can be up by the end of the year. You know, he, you wonder about he and uh, Bubba Chandler. I know mm-hmm. they've, they've both pitched at double-A level, and, and, and um, you know, so there, there, there's a possibility we see them before the end of the year, and and uh, Jared Jones as well. I mean, that would have been nice to see him pitch. I mean, saw him. He's throwing close to 100 miles an hour. I think he touched 100 this spring, too, and had some pretty good breaking stuff to go with it. So, yeah, the future is bright, you know, and I think these some of these guys will help this team, you know, in the second half, if not before. 
and and certainly next year. And so I I, I just see so much pitching depth that that, that that's going to help this club in twenty not only this year but in twenty five as well. It's going to be fun, really is. Hey, John, uh, for a lot of your career, you were a utility player, and uh, that used to be something that people said, oh, he's just a hanger-on, but no more uh, utility players. And, and you were one of the ones at the beginning of this. Uh, utility players are, are, are guys that are very, very valuable to teams, and, and the Pirates have some in camp right now that uh, they're trying to sort through and find out who's going to be the, the, the best mix of guys who make the roster who has impressed you among all of these uh, uh, non-roster invitees to Pirate Training Camp? Well, Jared Triolo, I don't know if he'll end up being in that kind of role or not. I mean, he came up as a, a gold glove minor league third baseman who has proven that he can play anywhere in the infield and probably if you throw him in the outfield. But he may end up being an everyday second baseman the way he's played this spring. I think he has a leg up as far as that's concerned. And so... Um, you know, uh, Billy McKinney, who's a non-roster guy, has really opened eyes. I think he's reached base, reached base now 13 straight games, and he can play all three outfield spots and play first base as well. But uh, the utility players is, is, a, is a much more uh, valuable thing now, I think, than ever, because they carry so many pitchers. Teams carry 13 pitchers. you got a designated hitter. And so your bench, you figure you have a backup catcher, and then you have – three or four more guys, and so if you can move around and uh, play multiple positions, you're going to add value to the club because if somebody's banged up, you know, or you have a couple of guys banged up that you don't want to put on the injured list, then you, you can move a couple of guys in, in a couple of different positions. So I think it, it's a very important role. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see who's – you know, kind of the utility knife as far as moving around the infield, like who will be your backup shortstop if Cruz needs a day off. Will that be Triolo, or will they have a guy like Alika Williams who can play everywhere, a very good defensive um, middle infielder? Yeah, that, I mean, it, it'll it'll be interesting to see who, who fits that role, but I'm sure they're going to have a couple outfielders that can play all the positions and and maybe first base a uh, guy like Connor Joe who goes about his business. Connor Joe's another one I didn't mention, but mm-hmm. we've seen him in center. He's looked good. He's been in the outfield. He's anywhere in the corners. He's looked good. He's been at first base. He's played a little second base. So he's another guy that'll make the club and you know probably play most days against lefties, but he'll also move around. So you know there there there's a few for you and. Um, you know, again, I can't say enough how valuable that is to have guys who can that are athletic enough to move around. Well, when you came up, you were a third baseman, uh, and the Pirates were already established at third with uh, Bobby Bow. Uh, but but there you were, and uh, you played multiple positions as well. Um, did you ever catch in a big league game? I did. I think I have like three games, maybe four innings or so uh, behind the plate, and I owe a lot of that to Jim Leland. I mean. My first year, I was only a third baseman, and then my second year, he said, hey, I want to look at you at first and second, so I, I, I went back to the minors and played a little first and second. Then next year, he says, well, you, know, you think you can play outfield? And I'm like, sure, so he threw me out in center field <laughs> for a while, and then a couple of years after that, I was like, hey, I, you know, we could use an emergency catcher. You want to try that? So I'm like, sure, so they sent me down uh, actually here to Bradenton, and I, I caught you know a, a dozen or so games, and so that was in my toolbox too. So I, I loved it. I loved moving around. That uh, it was it was fun playing a lot of different positions, and so um, you know, kind of you know didn't didn't start with that type of thing till you know I was probably in my mid twenties, but um, I loved it. It kept me around a lot longer, and I have Jim Leland to thank for that. I was just picturing. Uh, you taking your first major league pitches as a catcher and, and Wakefield being on the mound. <laughs> yeah, you know, I got drafted with Tim Wakefield. Never caught him. I did face him once. But, um, yeah, he, uh, it's a shame what happened to, to him and his family and his wife, everything. It's, it, it was sad. But, yeah, I, I, I did catch Tom Candiotti. I was with the Dodgers oh, one yeah? camp. Yeah, so that was kind of fun. Yeah, I got to catch him in just in a, you know, just in a, a side session, not in a game. But, uh yeah, I, I got to catch some pretty pretty cool pitchers over the years. Were there any that scared the heck out of you? Oh, there were some guys. Uh, there was a couple lefties. You know, it's weird, but the, the guy wasn't even a hard thrower. Scott Sauerbeck only threw like 90 miles an hour, but mm-hmm. his ball moved like crazy, and he used to break my thumbs. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wasn't fun. Anytime you had a guy with some late movement, and you know, if you didn't, if you caught it on 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 the inside of your thumb, boy, that would that would ache for a while, and then then you feel it, uh, you know, even when you're hitting. So that just guys like that that had a ton of movement, they were never fun to catch for me. I wouldn't guess. I wouldn't guess. Hey, John, it's been fun this week. Are you uh, working today? I am. We got a trip up to Tampa today and uh, yeah, today and tomorrow. So um, yeah, it's it's kind of nice because obviously you get to see these guys and see the young prospects and stuff like that. But um, you know, I, I also get days off in between. So yeah. spring training is always a good time. Our last chance to talk with you then. Uh, when you think about this coming season uh, and how optimistic you are uh, about this team, it should be a fun year, shouldn't it? Yeah, I expect it to be. I mean, I think the offense is going to be a lot better. Definitely the best offense that Derek Shelton has had, and I think the bullpen is going to be great too. Uh, the, the the difference is going to be the starting rotation. Marco Gonzalez pitched well yesterday, and Martin Perez, the two free agent lefties that the Pirates brought in, both have looked good this spring. And those two with Mitch Keller and whoever fills out the rotation is going to be the key. If this, this team's going to be a playoff team, they need good starting pitching. And right now, I mean, uh, if, if you were to rank them, I would go offense one, bullpen two, and and and, and the rotation three. So, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see who the next two guys are. And, um, you know, that's going to make a difference whether or not this team's a 500 or better team postseason team um but i know if they if they could stick around 500 going into the all-star break there's a lot of help those young pitchers we talked about coming up probably by the all-star break if not before that's going to help them down the stretch Uh, it's going to be a good time hey john it's been great working with you here this week appreciate everything that you've done for us you get a couple of more weeks in florida for spring training and then a few more days for the opening series in miami thanks for being with us you bet. Always, always good to chat. Pirate, uh, pirate baseball. Hopefully, we'll see you guys at the ballpark sometime this year. All right, John. Have a great day. You too. Bye bye. John Wayner with us this morning from the Pirates in our conversation with him, brought to you by ANA Construction and by Delaney and Fritz PC.